Hello everybody, welcome to the second round of 16 match. We've got Elados with... Uh, <laughs> oh, I meant to pause this. <laughs> Elados with Norse versus Pybot with Chorfs. I don't know. So this makes Elados being sick even crazier because he did it with Norse. <laughs> so he's got this Norse team and... Uh, does he have inducements? He's got two babes. And he's got a he's got oh he's got an instant wild animal. Uh and he's got a Norse team. Uh versus Chorves. And we all know Chorves absolutely wreck Norse. He does have three rookies, well not rookies, three near rookies. Obviously guard is the minimum and they've got it. He's got a claw mighty full claw pommer with horns and jugs, very nice. Strength 4, Rackle, Adge 4, Basic Bulls, you know, they don't have Tackle, they're not as, uh, they're not as scary as Jetty Bears were for Elves. So not as scary for Elves, this team, but scarier for Bash team, right? Guard on the, there's so loads of Guard, right? She probably could have taken Guard, honestly, on the Claw Pommer. I know you want to Claw Pommer with it every turn, but, um, like, Guard on it is totally fine, right? The times you don't pile on, so, and then and then just max guard, right? So he could have had he could have had nine guard, but eight is still a lot of guard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't fancy, I don't fancy Elados's <laughs> chances here. But you know, I do remember a certain CCL final where uh, Norse did all right. Oh, there's only eleven players for the Chorfs. Okay. Okay, well that, that makes things a bit more interesting, doesn't it? Exactly, yes, thank you. Thank you for that dog to the dog. You know, he would have to be absolutely terrible to lose to Chorps. No, to to lose to the Nauts, yeah. With Chorps, no. Glorious. No, um, I won't year, give dog in dog. until I'm victorious. <laughs> And I will defend. I will defend. Thanks for the replay and not being too rough on my sketchy punt. Glorious. Thank you very much, Sportbearer. <laughs> Staying fantastic for two glorious ones. Ah, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was sketchy, wasn't it? It was sketchy. But, you know, like, if, if you get it out of range, then you just can't score at all, can't you? So I understand, I understand going for it, but... I just, I should have probably considered it more than I would have done, which I would have probably considered it not at all. So I probably should have considered it, and then maybe dismissed it. Should have stood this guy up right on the ground. Should, he should have decided where he's going already. Nitpicky, but correct. Still hasn't stood him up. Now he does. That was a horrendous, a horrendous old blitz, yeah. Yeah, absolutely horrendous old blitz. Completely horrendous. <laughs> and like, not clearing the LOS, right? You should just clear the LOS. You should just clear the LOS. Three dice this guy, and then retreat. But you know, look, he tricked him into piling on, and now he can foul him. Oh, this, yeah, it's a 1D. Oh, dear. One one terrible Ulf Blitz followed by another. Um, you know, of course, somebody should have come along to, to cover the second hit. That was not good. Both had three assists. And a follow -up. Now we're just blitzing with Claw Mighty again. We've got a bit of we've got a bit of ordering issues, right? This guy not up here. Okay, was him. How old Magnus the Pink? Yes, I agree. But he was blitzing him into the Yeti, wasn't he? That was his idea, he was blitzing him into the Yeti. So he's getting him away from the Claw Pommer, counter blitz, and getting him away from and getting him into the Yeti. So I've, I've, the idea was fine, he should have just moved this lineman over. 
all the other Ulf over to make it two into two. And then he would have pushed him into the Yeti block. And then, you know, he could have fouled him with this rookie or whatever. <laughs> We've had three turns from Elodos. <laughs> with no attempt to pick up the ball. <laughs> or maybe, no, he was right next to him. Maybe, maybe he failed to pick up. Eh? I don't know. Can't, I literally can't rewind in, in these games because the rewind goes in... Re oh my god. Well, there you go. Dog to the dog. Called it. Apple works. Flip me. What a mega, mega hit. And mega apple. But he's already down two players. And he's already just one being because there's a load of guard and he's got no guard. And how the hell? How on earth is he protecting this ball? Just by rolling a bunch of three pusses. And a four plus. <laughs> and you better roll this four plus as well. Oh no. Man. I want to find everyone who plays North in real life. I think uphilling a claw mighty with life. stand firm was not the way. I mean, you know, if he just dodged him out, then he uh, keeps him free and stuff. Like, right? there was a really good dodge out there. He survives the claw might eat bats, though, so he's got that going for him. Maybe there's another player, is there? No. Okay, I don't really like the random basing. To be honest. TBH fam. I thought like maybe like he was gonna block this uh this uh hobgoblin free and like come through for a hobgoblin hit on the ball or something random like that. But I, I don't like just the random basing. Like, it's alright, I guess. Because everything's based and he can't do anything because he's shitty nuts. <laughs> but he just dodges away, doesn't he? So... God. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> well, there you go. At first, he lived with the Yeti Blitzers and then he died with the Yeti Blitzers. There you go. Great call. Great call from Dog to the Dog. <laughs> this is one of those games where you've got to live and die with your Yeti Blitzers. And that's what he did. He didn't live or die with his Yeti Blitzers. He literally just did both. Very rapidly. Probably should have dodged the ball carrier out first, right? Oh, that guy's cast. Finally uh, pays the price for that uphill into the claw. We're not space cadetting here. It's very controlled from Pybot. Not, you know, not tempted to try and get this strength fall through or anything. I don't think a lot of people would be, right? You could have just uh, put a guard in there, blocked him, blocked him, and then come through with the edge fall. Liquid Blood Bowl. Well, he somehow got a little bit of a... A little bit of, of something happening here, hasn't he? You could almost call this a cage. Almost. I mean, <laughs> pity the ball's nowhere near it. <laughs> but you could almost call it a cage. <laughs> Instant 2D on the ball. 
Does re-roll, gets the power. I mean, this, this was re really, 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 really tough matchup for Elodos, wasn't it? He really doesn't want to take that one in thirty six. No, I think he should have. Uh, he should have, you know, vacated the premises. Right, there was lots of movement for tackle on this half of the pitch. I mean, you can see even after they've, like, after God, right? At least I can pause. Even after they've activated, like three are on the centre line, and this one blitz is full move distance. So if he just moved the ball over around here, the problem is there is a strength for Rackler lurking, right? So like. There's not really any good places for you to ball to go, and all you can do is one day every turn. Like it, it started off bad for him, and it slipped away really quickly. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot to do with the turn ordering and questionable blitzes, blitzes and blocks, but I, mean, I mentioned those, didn't I? Like, the, the not getting the assist for the frenzy trap, the blitzing near the claw pom was, you know, should have cleared the lines. Not trying hard enough to pick up the ball, I guess, because, like, but then he, he guess he turned over, didn't he? So that's why he didn't get the chance, that's why he didn't get the chance to pick it up and stuff. So, while he could have mitigated a lot, there is still, it's still a really tough matchup. Like, it's a mega tough matchup, isn't it? Even after removing the Pommer, it's still pretty horrible, right? They still, they've still got, like, nine guard, no, eight guard, to your, like, two. So... It's, it's still really hard. I think it's a, a horrendous matchup. And I, you know, I'm not just making excuses. I do think, it's, and I thought it was a horrendous matchup for Danton as well. Like uh, Spork's team was really good. I don't think really Spork did anything wrong. You know, like you can argue that you can argue the punt, but then I just don't like punts anyway. Um, and you know, Rick does, so Rick would be like, "Love the punt." Oh my God, the leap, the leap play. If he's going to do that, wouldn't it have been better to have, like, gone... One, two, three, four, five... I don't know. No, probably not. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Like, you know, if he tried to get three dices with the, with the Ulf. If he'd blitz with the Ulf to get the Juggernaut hits. If he'd, uh... If he picked up the damn ball <laughs> earlier, um, of course he only got to remove the claw pommer because he'd he'd done the terrible blitz with the with the Ulf Werner on turn one. He could have, you know, he could have stopped the frenzy traps and stuff. So, yeah, cup nerves, cup nerves, definitely a thing. Playoff nerves. <laughs> I mean, he beat sick as eggs, didn't he? So, with this team. <laughs> <laughs> he did beat sick as eggs with this team. <laughs> Flip me. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> like, I don't care how well he played. Like, I just don't know how this team beat 16. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that's got to be one of the dicings of all time, right? Like, if you take away how well either of them played... Like, just in a complete vacuum, I just don't see how this snowstorm... I mean, I guess just the, the friend, the, the the Yeti just, like, kills an orc every turn or something? Like, it's just got to be a comedy mega. Like, this team is... It's not the best, is it? Let's be honest. But there is, you know, he, and he did have the chance to, to dice the... Uh, the Chorfs pretty well, right? With only 11 players, the Chorfs are, are fragile. Like, they're very strong. It's a, re it's a really good 11. Really good 11. But it is just 11, so, you know, he just needed a bit of luck to whittle these down to, like, you know, 9 or 8 for the second half. Wouldn't have been crazy uh, after he got rid of the claw pond, which obviously might dismantle his team this half. Yep. <laughs> Yep, it might. Yeah. 
Yeah, there, there were there were a lot of mistakes, but I do think even if he'd played perfectly, it would have been really hard. Like he would have had to, he needed, like you know, near perfect play or near perfect dice to win this game. I think. I think it was very tough. You know, because like any any kind of funky move you make, there's there's a strength for Rackler to answer. There's bulls to answer. So like you know, it's easy to say, oh, well, he should have moved away from these all these blockers. But then if he does, he's he's open to something else as well. Clopham is total bollocks, to be honest. Yeah, Dimmy. But then so a sneaky get dirty player, isn't it? And sneaky get dirty player is gotten by. Undead after two games. Clawpom at least took 20 odd games and doubles and stuff. I think this is another frenzy trap. So he just re rolls for a power. Yep. Yeah, like he doesn't have to keep frenzy trapping himself, does he? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like he could hit something else and not a frenzy trap himself. Frenzy trap himself while g getting hit by the claw pump and stuff, yeah, so. Safe to say, not his. Not his best game of Blood Bowl. But, you know, also pretty desperate, so I guess he thinks, look. It's the playoffs, there's no game after this, so who cares if some players die if I can get the win. But, um, but you know, the, the counterpoint to that is you still need players to win the game that you're in, right? So, like, you know, people people say about, like, oh, you know, in, in res, you know, like, NAF style, you don't need to protect your players. Well, you don't need to protect your players in NAF style, because your best players are pretty shit anyway, right? They're just like a player with one skill. But in like in this kind of environment, you need your claw pommer to win this game. You, do, you know, like you need your claw pommer, you need your your wolves, your your yeti and stuff. Like you need them on the pitch to win the game. So it's not just for the future. And you don't really need any single player in that style because your best player. I mean, the best player in in res is literally like a war dancer with strip ball, isn't it? It's like the absolute ultimate player in red. Generally. If you, if if stacking isn't allowed. If stacking's allowed, it's like a a sidestep two heads gutter runner or a uh, sneaky get dirty player human catcher or something. But, uh, you know, the best players in that style are just not good, is the point. <laughs> And the best players in these games win the game by themselves, you know? like this fella. Could have done. I actually like hitting this guy more. A lot more. Even though he's got like tackling strip and stuff. He's got sure hands and doesn't have dodge. So I'd have rather block this guy and then have like a wider thing going forward. So he's just not moving the cage, okay. I, I would have liked to have seen a bit of movement that turn. I mean, he's not in a rush, is he? Like, there's barely a team left. <laughs> he's cast four players. There's not much of a team left. <laughs> yes. The thing with Claw versus Norse is... Everybody's got Claw when you play Norse, isn't it? So it's not that bad. He instantly does the claw hit though. Glorious. Cast. <laughs> oh god. And then three D I guess you can hit here and then if he sidesteps to there you can uh, you can blitz him on two D with a claw bomb. Oh I hate this block. 
I hate this, but he's good. So he must be GFIing to hit this guy. No, well then that's just terrible, isn't it? You've got to three dice him with pom. You've got to pom this guy in three D. Was that was that not the berserker? If that's the berserker, you've got the three dice. And if it's a lineman, I guess you don't have to. But I still would have done. I still would have three D'd with pom. Rather than not. And the double eleven, yeah. Like dice happen as well sometimes, don't they? We've got the leaper though, eh? So the leaper can uh, leap in and uh, one D. No, probably not. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. I guess he can one D. <laughs> no, I just went for the upper. Oh, hey! Oh, he got double pals! <laughs> Amazing! Amazing! I think even Elliot would call this over, yeah. Oh my god, oh, he's got sprint! Oh my god, he's in the pass! He's got the catch! No way! <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Pie bot in tatters. I find everyone who plays Norse in real life and just beat them to within an inch of their fucking life. That was life. incredible. What a play. Okay, Ozen. Holy moly. What a play, guys. Oh, I can just hit him. Sad. Well, he's not armor broken. He's not armor broken. What were the odds? Pr probably not as low as you'd think. Right? Like, leaps of 3 plus uphill. They both had to be 5 pluses. So it's like 1 in 9. And then, like, some 3 plus dodges. I think he's got sprint sure fit, right? So 3 GFI is pretty easy. The pass in a tackle zone was like a 4. It probably wasn't as like you know you'd think it should be something ridiculous. I mean it'll still be low obviously, but I reckon like not insane like you know maybe it's two percent or something. Gets the push yeah uphill block is better than dodging and picking up the fall so yeah does the correct play of the uphill blitz. And diced by it uh, well first of all being out of rerolls completely, and second of all it being blood ball two right blood ball three could have used another reroll in the pickup but uh, he's out of rerolls anyway, and here comes the. Strength for Rackler to try and tidy things up. Which isn't do perfectly. Could have done a stand up or something, couldn't he up there? Could have stood this guy up. Would have mattered. Like you, you know, you just you, this is just one of those plays where you score and you've got a chance that you don't score and you've lost, right? Dead. <laughs> Because Pybot's one will he doesn't have to score himself. Man, imagine it. Imagine if Elidos had got his drive done in the first half, and then this had happened, and that like you no, know, now Pybot has to score in two turns to get to overtime. That would have been amazing. But as it is, he's just got to survive. Oh, nothing. He's just stunned. He's got to pick it up next turn. He can run back and foul as well. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like that. Try to remove all that. Nope. But I liked it. I like the play, guys. But he's got the he's got the show hands there, like so. It's still super likely that he picks it up. Oh wow, 5 plus 3 plus. 
Five, three, two, two. Let's go. So he's, got, he's got a player in range who has jump up. He's in range. And he can't get 3D. Let's get powered though. No AV break. I don't like that move, I think. He should have gone here, right? So that then if you wanted to go four, you'd have to go five, four, three. Now you can just go four, three. And you still you still lock him in place with a penis cage by putting him there and him there. And you can just screen off from this tackle guy, I guess. Ah, yeah, it should do. Tanks spawn. That'll be an interesting. That'll be an interesting one to watch. Flip me. Oh, straight in. Yeah, because, like, to be fair, six team isn't that good against a bash team, right? But it's great against an, an edge team because he's just got the, 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 the. His blitzer was unbelievable. His blitzer was unbelievable, and he, like, he lost the. Uh, he lost like all the black orcs, didn't he? Pretty much. I think he lost three black orcs. One leaving the team, and then the others injured. But um, yeah, his his lack of black orc development cost him in the league. But he still killed my entire team with his one player. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not bitter about. It. I've totally forgotten about it. Lovely 3D. Optimal play. You can get the ball hit there. I don't know if you could have gone one further or not. You can hit the ball, right? Oh no, it's a it's a lineman, it's not a blitzer. Kaz. <laughs> Oh god, look at that. Seven cars. Three guys. It's amazing, isn't it? There being players in the dugout. Like, actually dugouts. Instead of a stupid row of players. And the, like, that looks good, doesn't it? Being two, two wide instead of one wide. So much better. Well, there you go. What an absolute massacre. Unbelievable. 24 AV breaks to three. <laughs> so, you know... Probably a bit of a dicing overall as well, but um, you know there were there were a bunch of mistakes. There were a bunch of mistakes on Elados's end, um, but you know a horrendous matchup for him. Obviously not a, not great dice for him. And now his reward is he will he will face Spork Bearer in the quarterfinals. So there you go. Um, commiserations <laughs> to Elados. And congratulations to Pybot. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.